Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for coming out today as we gather together to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The King, as we've said the last few weeks, who is seated on his throne and has nail pierced hands, always the marks of his love and his victory over the grave for us. Well, it's good to be together. I hope you have had a good week. I hope that you have found refreshment in the Lord. And one of the things we're going to focus on today is how to find that refreshment in the Lord, even on some really terrible days. But we also have a privilege today to gather together in, in, uh, in worshiping the King and in fellowship. And if you are watching right now, I just want to encourage you as uh, other people are watching and there's a chance to sort of interact through Facebook. If you're on Facebook, just encourage you to greet one another. And, and if you find yourself uh, throughout this week or this day not really feeling like you've had a lot of interaction with other brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to invite you or encourage you to, to pick up the phone and call one another and let's just continue to talk with one another. I want to make just a, a, a sort of special announcement, or maybe two. One, if, if you're watching this, just to note that uh, we did change the service times, and if you would like to come out next week on Saturday evening, we're meeting at 6 o'clock now in the evening instead of at 7 because of the, the days getting shorter. And then on Sunday mornings, we're meeting at 10 o'clock instead of 9. And so at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings and at 6 o'clock on Saturday nights. Also, I want to say that if you're watching this on Sunday morning, August 30th, that we are going to have some prayer walks today right after this service. And I uh, want to invite you to meet us either at the church or you can meet up at Heartland School. We're going to do it right after our morning worship service here, so we'll probably be there around 11.30. And we're going to walk around the school and pray as this week school starts up. And another thing we'd like to do, whether it's together or just invite people to go out and do it, is to go and pray around some other schools in the area as well, just walking around asking that the King of Glory would both provide and protect all that's needed uh, as school starts up for the teachers, for the students, for the families as they're sending kids, and for those families who aren't sending their kids to be praying for that as well. I believe those are all the announcements. That one, if I can just summarize again, after the service ends, get in the car, drive up to Heartland School. We'll walk around in, in individually or in, in whatever groups you come in to pray. As a call to worship this morning, I want to read what comes after what we read last week as a call to worship. And it is from Psalm number 145. Last week we read the first three verses, and now we're going to read verses 4 through verse 7. Psalm number 145, verse 4 through 7. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. Amen. I want to invite you to join as Trevor leads us joyfully singing about God's righteousness and goodness and power. Let's join together in song this morning by singing Praise the Lord, the Almighty.
as we spend time inviting each other to praise the Lord, I want to give us a chance to just do that individually, to praise the Lord. If you haven't done it yet today, I want to just take some time to quietly come before the Lord and praise him for what he's done and for who he is. And perhaps also, as it says in this song, to ponder anew what the Almighty can do when with his love he befriends you. Let's just take some time to do that. Father God, we praise you today that you are seated on your throne and there is nothing and no one who can ever take you off of it. We also praise you that there is nothing in all of creation that can separate us from your love. We praise you today that you are holy and powerful, but you are also merciful and kind, that you know us, you know every hair on our head, you love us, Lord God, that you so love the world that you gave your only son. I thank you for salvation and I I praise you that you desire to fellowship with us and to restore us to fellowship with you. Father, we just pray that you would fill our hearts with a rejoicing. Even in the midst of all the pressures and hardships of life, will you allow us to be a rejoicing people? And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I wish I could kind of put out there right now to see if there's any prayer requests, but we do have a number here that we, we send out, and so you have these before you, if you printed them out, if you look them up in your email right now. And I want to just take some time, which we haven't done the last couple of weeks on this, at this service, to pray together, and prim- primarily to pray for um, our nation and to pray for all the schools starting up, and as I mentioned, families making decisions of doing something new this year and they sort of feeling the weight of that and the pressure of that and schools and teachers and I want to just take a moment to pray and I'm going to ask you to pray with me as well. Father in heaven, you've invited us to cast all of our cares upon you and so we cast the care of our nation on you. We ask Lord God that you would set us free from this virus This pandemic, we ask, Lord God, that you would take it and throw it into the heart of the sea. Pray especially for those right now who are just fighting it and are going through such pain uh, as they do. And I just ask, Lord God, that you would give them comfort and healing. I thank you again for all those on the front line medically. And I just pray that you continue to give them wisdom and strength and endurance. Lord God, I pray that you would bless our nation in the midst of so much disunity about so many different topics would you bless us with unity and i pray that you would allow your church to be in the front line of displaying unity even when we have different opinions about things to love one another as you've commanded us and that the world will see it and know that you truly are god and that you truly are the savior father i also lift up those in our congregation who are recovering and um both from medical procedures and a number of people, Lord God. I think of Laura Marignano and just thank you for how her surgery went. I just pray that you would give her strength as she recovers from her heart surgery and for, uh, for Ray Skibsky and um, uh, Ruth Buchanan and for Will Hilbrick as they're recovering from their surgeries. We just ask, Lord God, that you would continue to give them strength and make it so that they are fully, fully recovered and I pray for Ellen Jansen as she's back home and just ask, Lord God, that your strength and healing hand would be upon her as well. Pray for Ray and Ruth Ann as they, Ray's son passed away this week and as they're ministering to his family. And Lord, I just pray that you'd, you'd bless them as they grieve. Lord, you are the God of comfort and would you draw near to them in your comfort. And Father, I pray that you would allow compassion to expand in us, that our cup of compassion would get bigger 
and wider and deeper, Lord God. I pray that we would have a greater capacity to have compassion and generosity towards one another as we reflect on your compassion and generosity towards us. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would bless the start of the school year. I pray that you would protect schools in our area all throughout New England, uh, specifically in Connecticut, specifically in our north western corner. I just ask, Lord God, that you would allow there to be protection on the schools as they start up, that you would allow no outbreak, no virus to, to, to uh, come in and to spread. Pray for the teachers that you just thank you for them, and I pray your blessing on them as they've worked so hard in preparation, and uh, all the staff that's getting everything ready. We just thank you for that and just pray that everything would work smoothly off the start for those in class and for those doing things electronically. I just pray that it would go smoothly. I pray for all the kids and their emotions as they're excited about school starting, some of them, but, um, but also kind of everything feels a little new. I just pray that you would protect them. I pray for families that are still wrestling with the decisions that they're making, and whether it be with how to pull it off or financially or uh, having people that can be home to do it. And I just ask, Lord God, you'd bless everyone as, they, as we get started here. And I pray, Lord God, in Jesus' name, that you would specifically put your hand of blessing on, the, on all the schools that are represented in our church and the, the different kids and families go to. Lord God, I just pray that your blessing would be upon them. And Lord, I pray also for us as we, as we are able to meet together some and are looking forward to do some more with different programs that we have as, as we move a little bit farther in the fall. I just ask that you would, you would allow us to have great wisdom and great blessing from you as we do. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a note for those of you who are wondering, as we move into the fall, we're, we are we're taking a little bit of a slow pace going into uh, Sunday school, going into youth ministry, going into other programs that we have. We're sticking with what we have been doing this summer and, and look to uh, get other things opened up, but not quite as soon as we usually do in the beginning of September, but are just going to watch for a little bit and are still planning and look forward to hear some more of advice from you if you have any suggestions, and there will be a, another survey that's coming out shortly, and we'd like your feedback on that. I'm going to ask if uh, the worship team would come up and continue to lead us. Let's join together this morning and worship our good Father in heaven. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am Far and 
hardly speak peace unexplainable life I can hardly think as still as you call me, deeper still as you call me, deeper still into love, 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 you're good with love, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. so much for that, Lord. Uh, I just ask that you you help everybody watching this, um, everybody here in this room and, and, and online, Lord, and just help us um, see more of your goodness today and just, just be grateful for that, Lord. Um, bless Roger as he, he brings the message this morning and, and help us hear what, what it is you want us to hear this morning, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much, guys, for leading us in worship. And as I mentioned before, worship is sort of the theme of the day. And what I want to do is sort of lay out the reason and the blessing of worshiping. First, though, I just quick question, um, obvious question, which I probably know the answer to. Have any of you ever had a bad day? And perhaps you would be thinking right now, yeah, I had a bad day. I had a bad day this week. I had a few of them. Maybe that's true for you. But what about this? Have you ever had a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day? Those are the words in the title of a book that, that Judith Viorst writes about a boy named Alexander. And I want to read just a little bit about his day. Have you never seen this book or had a chance to read this book? Well, I'm going to read a couple of pages in it, but I'm going to skip around a little bit. But I want to read about Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Now, I'm going to read out of the Bible, too, today, okay? So don't think this is, this is all we're going to read from. But I just want you to uh, get, a, get a sense of how bad his day was. I went to sleep with gum in my mouth, and now there's gum in my hair. And when I got out of bed this morning, I tripped on the skateboard by mistake. I dropped my sweater in the sink while the water was running, and I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. 
At breakfast, Anthony found a Corvette Stingray car kit in his breakfast cereal box, and Nick's found a junior undercover agent code ring in his box of cereal. But in my breakfast cereal box, all I found was breakfast cereal. Just going to skip a couple pages here. There were two cupcakes in Philip Parker's lunch bag, and Albert got a Hershey bar with almonds, and Paul's mother gave him a piece of jelly roll that had a little coconut sprinkles on top. Guess whose mother forgot to put in dessert? It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. There were lima beans for dinner, and I hate lima beans. There was kissing on TV, and I hate kissing. And when I went to bed, Nick took back the pillow he said I could keep, and the Mickey Mouse nightlight burned out, and I bit my tongue. The cat wants to sleep with Anthony, not with me. It, was a, it has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. My mom says some days are like that. And it's true. Some days are like that. And perhaps that kind of day sounds all too familiar to you. But when speaking about those kinds of days, there's a big question that followers of Jesus Christ, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and as their King, there is a question that we need to be asking ourselves, and it's this. How do I continue to trust God, trust the King, that he is both good and powerful when I'm having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day? Is there, is there something that would help me to stay centered on God's provision, on God's protection in the midst of one of those days, so I don't get overwhelmed by frustration and despair, but instead can continue to live in the joy of the Lord? You see, because joy is different than happiness. Happiness too often is attached to the good, super wonderful days. Joy can be true in the midst of all days. And the answer to my question is, is there something that can help us? The answer is yes. And in order to show that to you, I want you to see what King David did when he was having his own terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Now, Psalm 63, which we're going to read a little later... But it has a title to it. Some psalms have titles beyond just saying Psalm 63. Sometimes psalms tell us who wrote them. And also some psalms tell us what was happening when they were written. And Psalm 63 tells us as a title, a psalm of David when he was in the desert of Judah. Now, we should know that the desert of Judah is not a very pleasant place to be. And people didn't just go there for vacation or even to go have a day of rest. It was a desert. It's not enjoyable. Nobody chooses to spend time there. But, but David had, in his timeline of life, two extended times when he was in the desert in Judah. One was when he was a young man running for his life from King Saul who wanted to kill him. A second time is later in his life when he's running from his son Absalom, who also wants to kill him and to steal his throne. And if I can add, those were part of the unraveling that David experienced after he had an affair with Bathsheba and had her husband killed. And there's sort of a a dark period of David's life with these things going on. Psalm 63, we can tell which one of those experiences is because the last verse says the king, which David was at the time of the second trip to the desert. The king will rejoice in the Lord. Psalm 63 then is written when David is having a few different terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days. I want you to turn with me to hear part of that day, which we can find in 2 Samuel chapter 15. And I'm going to start with verse 5, just to get ourselves sort of acquainted with what kind of day this was for King David. As King David approached Baharim, a man from the same clan as Saul's family came out from there. His name was Shimei, son of Gera, and he cursed as he came out. He pelted David and all the king's officials with stones. 
though all the troops in the special guard were on David's right and left. As he cursed, Shimei said, Get out, get out, you man of blood, you scoundrel. The Lord has repaid you for all the blood that you shed in the household of Saul, in whose place you have reigned. The Lord has handed the kingdom over to your son Absalom. You have come to ruin because you are a man of blood. Then Abishai, son of Zariah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over and cut off his head. But the king said, What do you and I have in common, you sons of Zerai? If he's cursing because the Lord said to him, Curse David, who can ask, Why do you do this? David then said to Abishai and all of his officials, My son, who is my own flesh, is trying to take my life. How much more than this Benjamite? Leave him alone. Let him curse, for the Lord has told him to. It may be that the Lord will see my distress and repay me with good for the cursing I am receiving today. So David and his men continued along the road with Shimei was, while Shimei was going along the hillside opposite him, cursing as he went and throwing stones at him and showering him with dirt. The king and all of his people with him arrived at their destination exhausted. And there he refreshed himself. Amen. If I can give just a very quick summary, and I don't plan on spending a lot of time in this chapter just to give us a glimpse, though. David is running for his life. His own son is trying to kill him. He is exhausted as he travels through the dangerous desert. And now there is this man who is throwing rocks, kicking dirt, and cursing David all along the way. It was, I think, fair to say, a horrible, terrible, no good, very bad day that David was having. And at this point, there's not much that David could do about the details of that day and the circumstances around it. His men think, oh, why don't we shut this guy up and that will sort of, that will fix things. But David knew in his heart that that's not really the main problem of this day. But what David also knew is that he could do something about his response on that day. And that is so critical for us to understand today. There are times we want to do things about the situations of the day when what we may only be able to deal with is our response to them. Now, the details of David's horrible day may not be the same as your horrible day. And to be honest, it's not even really the horrible days that get to us as much as it is the back-to-back-to-back pretty bad days that seem to take the biggest toll on our emotions. But the question is this. In the midst of it all, is there anything that we can do to continue to trust in God, to help us to continue to trust in our good and our powerful God when we're having those terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days? And the answer, and this is going to sound simplistic, and I don't want that because the true answer is there is something we can do, and it's worship. We can worship the Lord. Now, some weeks ago, I write something to the congregation on Thursday, and somebody responded to my Thursday thought when I was sort of expressing that I had been battling a great amount of insecurity, and this wonderful sister in Christ sent me this response. She said, Pastor Roger, I, I have been thinking about and praying for you, and I came across this saying, worship and worry cannot occupy the same space. Worship brings freedom from worry. So worship on. And what a great declaration. Worship and worry cannot occupy the same space. When I am praising God, who is almighty, when I'm praising him for being everywhere present, for knowing everything, it is very hard for me then in that same moment to be filled with worry that I'm all alone or I'm outside of God's ability to help me. Now notice if we could jump to something that Jesus says. When Jesus teaches his disciples how to pray, he begins, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Here's how you should pray. And he begins with praise. Why? For one, just, just to start, for one, because God deserves our praise. 
God deserves the praise of his people. And in a world that is increasingly denying the existence of God and the handiwork of God, it is right for us daily to praise him for all that he has done. It is a privilege for those who know that Jesus Christ is creator and Lord and Savior to give him praise to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit to give them praise. But that's not the only reason that Jesus tells us to begin with praise. I think there is another one, and I believe very strongly that this other one is an act of grace on his part. You see, when we spend time praising God, and by that I don't mean simply saying four words, hallowed be thy name, but when we spend concerted time praising God for all of his wonderful deeds, for giving him credit for his marvelous creation, for all of his glorious character, his amazing character, and also for his provisions of daily bread, of forgiveness of sins, of deliverance from the evil one, all things we pray in the Lord's Prayer, as we give God praise for doing all that. the things that we so easily get caught up worrying about begin to fade away. Now, the opposite is true. As we meditate on the things that we so easily worry about, they become like a mighty fortress. They become overwhelming. But as we meditate on the Lord, on the King, who is all-powerful, the things of earth grow strangely dim. It is a reality. Unfortunately, in times of great pressure and worry, we may think to ourselves, I don't have time to praise or I'm not in the mood. But the truth is, in doing that, we're just rejecting the very and only thing that can keep us sane, if I can be so blunt. There's a great testimony about Martin Luther, who, and I don't remember the details of this and the timing, but who said on normal days he prayed for an hour on days of great great pressure he prayed for two it might even be more than that number but he prayed more and praised more on the days that felt the darkest so what about david what did he do in the midst of his terrible horrible no good very bad day well as i mentioned turn to chapter 63 of the psalms and notice what David writes when he is in the desert of Judah, running for his life with Shimei, pelting him with stones and cursing him. Psalm 63. O God, you are my God, and earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and a weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you. My your right hand upholds me. They who seek my life will be destroyed. They will go down in the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword and become food for jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God's name will praise him, while the mouths of liars will be silenced. Amen. These are the words of David in the midst of a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. And you can hear the tiredness in David's voice, his desperation. I need you, Lord. You are my strength and my help. No one is disputing the idea that he's tired or that he's had a terrible day. In fact, I would suggest that the fact that there's a title which tells us on which day or in what time period right, David writes this is the most beneficial to us so that we don't get this misconception that the only time to praise God is when we're filled with big, giant, smiley faces. 
Too often, the idea of worship has these pictures in mind. I want to just show you a few. These big, beautiful, smiley faces with joy spilled all over them. That's when we worship. And that's true. But the truth is that these other pictures can also be images of worship. In our desperateness, with no smile on our faces, we can also praise God for who he is and that he is our help in the midst of all that is clouding down upon us. Perhaps the greatest example of this comes in the first chapter of the book of Job. Just a few verses into Job's story, we are told that Job is unbelievably blessed by God. And that he honors God. He loves God. Job has wife and children. And he has servants. And he has so much wealth through all the cattle that he has. And livestock that he has. But we're also told in the first chapter that there's a conversation that goes on between the devil and God Almighty. The devil is given permission to take those blessings away from Job because Satan believes that when Job has them taken away, he's going to curse God. And so that's what happens. His blessings fade away very fast. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to read just a few verses from Job chapter 1. We'll start with verse... 18, verse 14 rather, it says, A messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby, and the Sabines attacked and carried them off. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. We're told other things that happened, and then at the end in verse 18, it says, While he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, Your sons and daughters were fasting and drinking pardon me, feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house when suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them and they are dead. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. And at this, Job got up and he tore his robe and he shaved his head. Then he fell on the ground in worship. Just listen to that again. Then he fell on the ground in worship. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. You see, if there's ever a day that it would seem like you you shouldn't praise God, it might be this day that Job's having, but that's not at all the reality. Don't run away from praising the Lord in the midst of the terrible, horrible days. Run to him more, faster, and harder. Now, neither David nor Job are stupidly ignorant about how, their day, how bad their day was. But they were also not ignorant about the fact that God was still on his throne in the midst of it because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in chapter 2 of Job, we read just this one comment from his wife whose advice to him is that he should curse God and die. Shake his fist at God and curse him and die. And that's what our flesh can seek to lead us to do as well on those horrible days. But don't listen. Don't listen to your flesh. There's no healing in cursing God. But there is healing, however, in worshiping him. Healing from our crushing emotions and the overwhelmingness that we're feeling. But that brings up such an important idea. What do you want most? You see, one of the problems in our modern day is that we too much are focused on changing the circumstances of our horrible days, which at times we can't do anything about. But what we can do something about is changing our reaction and our direction in the midst of those very bad days. And the way to do that again is to run towards God and not away from him. Go back to David's terrible day and his praise in Psalm 63. Look what David says again in verses 3 through 5. 
Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. Now listen to this. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of food. My soul will be satisfied as with the richest of food. You see, the truth is that our soul can be satisfied even when our stomachs are empty. And also, the truth is that our souls can be starving when our stomachs are full. And I would suggest that the latter is much more dangerous. It's much better to have a full soul and an empty stomach than a full stomach and an empty soul. Now, as you wake up in the morning, as all of us wake up in the morning, we, we look around, we check the weather to see what we should wear, and that's fine. Just don't check the temperature of your mood on a particular day in order to evaluate if you should or should not worship our God. Instead, dear Christian, begin your day in worship and continue throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, as it says in verse 6, David writes, On my bed I remember you. And when you're having sleepless nights, David says, I think of you through the watches of the night. Not oppressed by the things that I'm so worried about, but rather the goodness. I'm, I'm not counting sheep. I'm remembering all the different things that I have read that God has done and that I have seen God do in my own life. And if you need to, and gr- this is great advice that somebody gave me years ago, have a journal when you're having super wonderful, I, what's the opposite of the book, super wonderful, glorious days, write down how good God has been to you and then reread those. When you've seen God do mighty things in your life, write them down so you can read about them again when you're having those horrible days. Whatever you do, follow David's lead when he says at the end of this psalm, but the king will rejoice in God. Here's what I'm choosing to do on a day when I'm running for my life, for my very own son, And I have this man from Saul's clan who is cursing me, throwing rocks at me, and showering me with dirt. The king will rejoice in God. And as we come to the New Testament, that's what Paul declares and instructs again and again and again throughout the letter of Philippians. Paul says in very simple instruction, rejoice in the Lord I will say it again, rejoice. And he's not waiting for us to tell him what kind of day we're having. In fact, that's a response after he has said to two ladies who are having this disagreement and then the church is joining and siding with either one of them and there's division happening. Paul's antidote to all that division is rejoice in the Lord. And the antidote to being oppressed by our worry is rejoice in the Lord. Not to be free from the very bad days, but to be free in the very bad days from the crushing emotions of despair. There is so much to worship God for, his character, his actions. I want to encourage you to wake up daily. It's something that I have, finding myself reminding myself to do. And like any kind of exercise, you're going to go to the gym, you're going to start walking or running or working out, it takes time to get in a good habit. Begin your day with worshiping the Lord. On the sunny days and the cloudy days, praise the Lord. When the sun rises and when the sun sets, praise the Lord. When you feel like it and when you don't, Praise the Lord. When you are with others and when you're all alone, praise the Lord. When you think that you can and when you think that you can't, praise the Lord. And when you can't think of a single thing to praise him for, open up the Psalms and utilize other people's words and praise the Lord. And I believe they will act like a primer for your own praises to the Lord.
even and especially when you're having terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days. Praise the Lord. Because he's still on his throne. He knows you. And he is with you. Father God, I ask for you to give us grace through your spirit to receive this word of the Lord and also the help to follow it. I pray that you would open our eyes to see that though you give and take away, that your name is worthy to be praised for you have been so, so good to me, to all of us. Father, I pray that as people are listening to this and hearing this, it wouldn't be to just think that the message is about making ourselves feel good even on bad days, but rather in the midst of the very honest bad days to come to you, to cast our cares upon you because you care for us, but also to praise you that you are still in control. I pray for your help with this. If it has been too long and as if instead of praise we have been cursing you i pray for your forgiveness and i pray that you would start a new work in us a new habit in us and that it would become such a part of us that it would guard and protect and fill us with joy each and every day and that it might spread to all those around us i pray this in jesus precious name amen close this morning by singing blessed be your name Blessing be your name. Blessing. 
be the name of the Lord. Blessing be your name. Blessing be the name of the Lord. Blessing be your glorious name. Blessing be the name of the Lord. Blessing be your name. Blessing be the name of the Lord. Blessing be His glorious Father, we bless your name. We praise you and glorify you that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. As, as the Psalms say, we, we, we want to join with all of creation, all the angels, everyone everywhere praising your precious name. And I pray that you would open our eyes this week more and more to see what you are worthy of praise for in your character and in your conduct. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of worshiping today. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you and shine his face upon you. May he draw near to you and fill you with his peace as he turns his face towards you. Whether that be on the good days or on the bad days, the nearness of God and the shining of his face, may they be true forevermore. And may he be praised. Amen. Oh, blessings flow. 